Hi, my name is Aaron Gerds. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of AsheClinic News. I'm joined here with Dr. Young, who presented data to this week at the Ash Annual Meeting about Fetusaran and uh, the treatment of patients with hemophilia. So thank you for joining me, Dr. Young. Sure, and, my pleasure. And uh, speaking to you today about Fetusaran. So Fetusaran, what kind of drug is it and how does it work? Yes, yeah, so Fetusaran is a, a new kind of technology. There are a couple of drugs, um, not in hematology, but that are uh, already approved using this technology. Essentially, it's a small interfering RNA. And really what it does is gets into a cell and essentially targets a specific protein and turns the production of the protein off. So any disease where you want to turn off the production of a protein, this is a technology that, that could be considered. And in this case, in hemophilia, we are turning off the production of a protein called antithrombin. And that's what Fetusaran does. Oh, excellent. Um, so I, a lot of us are familiar with thanks to mRNA vaccines, like the storage issues with mRNA. Uh, it has to be super cool and gigantic freezers and all that. Does Fetusaran mm -hmm. suffer from the same types of issues? No, it doesn't actually. Um, it's, uh, it's different than, than an mRNA. It's a small interfering RNA. So it's a smaller, it is RNA as well, but it's a smaller version. And uh, I'll be honest, as far as the specifics of how uh, this differs in the technology from the mRNA vaccines, which you know we need cold storage, uh, I'm not technically savvy enough to know <laughs> that, but I do know that it does not need cold storage. Oh, excellent. It can be stored at room temperature. And uh, once, uh, you know, if it does get to the commercial market, uh, the storage will not be any yeah. issue at all. So it'll be a lot easier to distribute and give to patients then. Absolutely. Well, excellent. So what types of patients were you looking at? Was it, you know, patients with particular types of hemophilia or, or, or like severe or not so severe uh, patients included in the study population? Yeah, so my uh, study or the study that I uh, <clears throat> gave the uh, uh, plenary talk on was looking at patients with both types of hemophilia, A and B, mm -hmm. but only patients who have something called inhibitors. Inhibitors are anti-drug antibodies that interfere with the usual treatment we would use. The usual treatment in hemophilia A and B is replace the missing mm -hmm. protein. In hemophilia A, you're missing factor eight. In hemophilia B, you're missing factor nine. And for decades, the treatment was replace the missing protein. However, 30% of patients with hemophilia A and 5% with hemophilia B develop anti-drug antibodies against those proteins, so you can't use those treatments. You have to find something else. And um, up until now, really, the types of treatments we had uh, for those, which we call bypassing agents, are very cumbersome to use, um, have to be given intravenously multiple times a week often, and don't really work well to prevent bleeding. So what we need is new treatments that can uh, prevent bleeding uh, in patients with inhibitors, the hemophilia patients that have these antibodies, and not just that can do that, but can also do it by reducing the burden of the treatment. So something that is easy to infuse, like Fetusaran, which is subcutaneously infused, and that isn't, does not have to be infused very often. Fetusaran is only a once a month uh, drug. So if you can imagine a patient who just to treat bleeds may have to dose 10, 15, 20 times a month with an IV drug, to instead be able to prevent the bleeding in the first place was a, with a one, once a month, excuse me, subcutaneous drug, uh, you know, that, that is, you know, uh, really revolutionary, to be honest. Sounds like it'd be a dramatic improvement on a patient's quality of life and uh, for the <clears throat> administration of these uh, therapies. Was there a certain subpopulation within the study that benefited more from Fetusaran than others? You know, uh, we looked at different uh, populations. Uh, well, really, we just looked at hemophilia A versus hemophilia B, okay. and they both did well. So there wasn't really a, a specific uh, subpopulation within the inhibitor groups um, that did better. I'll say that this study was for patients 12 years and older. So these were all adolescents or adults, uh, but there are clinical trials looking at Fetusaran in children as well. Excellent. So that's a logical next step is kind of lowering the bar for age. Is there any other additional modifications that need to be done with the treatment <clears throat> regimen or other additional questions that need to be answered in order to move this treatment forward for patients? Yeah, so the uh, phase three studies are ongoing. Um, there are um, different approaches being looked at to try to improve upon the safety. Um, we already think that the drug is safe and with the benefits we see in the inhibitor patients, um, you know, we, we accept some level of risk because of the significant benefit, but nevertheless, we always wanna to try to improve upon safety. And so there's work being done now uh, since the end of the trial that I presented uh, looking at uh, improving the safety, uh, partly by measuring levels of antithrombin okay. and by uh, targeting levels of antithrombin 
that will reduce the risk for developing thrombotic complications, which is really the main risk with this drug. Okay. So the main complications that were th was thromb thrombosis. Those were the really, uh, yes, th those are the main um, uh, side effects or adverse events that, that are of real concern uh, with this particular drug. Were there other side effects seen commonly? We did see elevations in the liver function okay. test, so there was some effect on the liver. It was fairly modest, and in fact, uh, probably the best way to take a look at that is the fact that none of the patients who had that side effect discontinued the drug because of that side effect. And for most of the patients, it did eventually uh, go back down to normal. So while that is an adverse effect that we need to keep an eye on, um, it's not one that uh, led any patient to discontinue the study drug, so the severity was really not that significant. Okay. So it sounds like pretty manageable side effects, uh, keeping an eye out for thrombosis, but really an effective medication. So what's the most exciting part? Like what gets you most excited <clears throat> about Pitusaran in the future uh, in, in the treatment uh, algorithms and, and as it moves into to the clinic? Um, sure, so I think, you know, there's one particular group of patients. Uh, they have hemophilia B, it's the less common form of hemophilia, and they have um, inhibitors mm -hmm. or the antibodies. And for those patients, they really suffer. Yeah. I have three of those patients and they really suffer. And they suffer because we don't have adequate treatments for them. We have some of these bypassing agents, but they seem to bleed worse than anybody. They have the worst effects of hemophilia, meaning damage to their joints and really disruption of their quality of life. And so we really, really need drugs for those patients. Now, that's a small group of patients overall. Um, so from a you know, sort of commercial standpoint, mm -hmm. obviously, company who's developing this is really hoping that this will be uh, beneficial to more than just that group. But for me, uh, you know, that is really the first thing I'm looking for is having a drug that can treat those patients. Still though, um, there aren't any subcutaneous drugs for hemophilia B patients, yeah. even those without inhibitors. But I think that, you know, having, you know, more tools in the tool chest for us treating patients with hemophilia of any kind, including hemophilia A, is always going to be of benefit to the patients. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us, Dr. Young, and talking about your abstract. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, if you'd like to read the abstract, it is in uh, the Flood Journal, as well as coverage in Ash Clinical News. Uh, thanks again, Dr. Young. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much. Uh,